Welcome to Hadrian's Wall, built over 2,000 years ago by the Roman Empire, stretching over 60 miles on the two coasts of the United Kingdom, separating the Empire and the Barbarian lands to the north. Now let me take you on this epic journey of four days, covering the greatest stretch of the wall and the most beautiful landscapes of northern England. While the wall runs from coast to coast, the majority of that which can still be seen today is found in the middle stretch, which I'll be covering over a 43 mile journey, starting to the east of Carlisle and finishing north of Hexham. For me to get to the north of England, I'll be taking a train from near Liverpool, but it's easily reachable on most north to south train lines. Right, so let's get started, shall we? Travelling with me for this journey is my mum. It's a trip we've long wanted to do together and this year marks 10 years since we walked a week along the Great Wall of China, so it's great to be back on the trail with her again. From Carlisle we then took a local train service to Holt Whistle. From there it was just a short taxi ride to get us to our starting point. So we made it to our first official stop on this trip, a little village called Greenhead. We're staying at the Greenhead Inn, lovely nice little place, sadly no bar restaurant there so we had to do a little bit of a detour to a place called Blenkinsop Castle Inn and it's supposed to be a little cool little place. It's going to be um, sort of a pub restaurant all built into a castle. So yeah, that's so how we're going to start the evening. The walk will start tomorrow. Um, we'll be setting off bright and early. In the end, we were really lucky to get to check Blenkinsop Castle out. This place is quite cool. I um, don't know when it goes back to exactly. It might be sort of 15th, 16th century. It was then turned into 1800s manor house. And look, you can walk around, you've still got a lot of the features. We've got fireplaces. that last little bit of rest and luxury, it was time to start the official day one of the hike. So welcome to day one of our big trek along Hadrian's Wall Path. We're going to be doing 43 miles starting from Lanacost where, and we're going all the way to Corbridge at the end before finishing in Newcastle. Are you excited? Yeah, <laughs> I'm also warm and wet. We have chosen one of the worst days to start this. Um, there's a bit of a storm coming through northern England, so it's going to be a pretty wet day. Hoping it's going to ease out um, during it as we get onto the wall itself. Um, as we start the first couple of miles or so before we actually get to see any wall. But let's see how we go. Day one's going to be a nine mile walk. Probably one of the steadiest um, of the ones we're going to be doing over the next few days. Um, so yeah, starting in Lanacost and then going back to Greenhead where we stayed last night. We've made it to the first site um, along this Hadrian's Wall path and it's actually nothing to do with, not really nothing to do with the, the Roman wall. It's a old priory, actually slightly to do with the wall in that some of the stonework, which I'll show you shortly, was actually built from bits of the Hadrian's Wall. So where we're walking right now, there's no bit of Hadrian's Wall still left to be seen, but things like this were built along the way. Lanacost Priory was founded between 1165 and 1174 by Augustinian priests and monks. Being on the border of England and Scotland, it later suffered from the continuous wars of Scottish independence. In fact, Robert the Bruce made it his headquarters for three days in 1311. Sadly, priories such as this came to their end from 1546, with Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries. Vaulted undercroft underneath the rectory was just awesome and you can see in some of the foundations the recycled Hadrian's Wall stone. Half of the nave was restored in 1740 to become a parish church, which you can also visit today. But now we hit the trail again, through local villages and following the Hadrian's Wall path icon, the White Acorn. And then, excitement! 
just got our sight of our first bit of wall. This is officially the first or last bit of wall you see depending on the direction you're travelling. It includes one of the hundreds of turret towers that lined the wall, which I'll explain more about later. While the wall isn't visible above ground for many stretches of the route, one bit that is consistent and sometimes overlooked is the big defensive ditch built in front of the wall as an extra defence against the Celts to the north. One of the cool things about Hadrian's Wall is that along the way local communities have put big honesty boxes for various snacks, cold drinks, Uh, everything is a pound, they've got a complete set up for hot drinks, they've got ice lollies and chilled drinks, snacks. So we think we've found the wall proper now. We've just joined it from the ditches just back there and we're hoping now this is what we're going to be following pretty much all the way along. We next came across our first Roman fort, one of 14 which stretch across the length of the wall. Compared to some of the others, Berderswald Fort is one of the less well excavated examples and given there are plenty more forts to come along the hike, we gave this one a miss. And nearby was our first mile castle. These gateways through the wall are situated every Roman mile, or 1.5 kilometres in today's terms, with two turrets positioned between each as watchtowers. They also make a great lunch spot. To add the cherry on today's history tour, we came across the remains of a major Roman bridge. Just got to the Roman bridge, which is pretty cool. You can definitely tell that the, cha the channel of the river has moved in the 2000 years that it's been since then. But a really impressive piece of infrastructure still. So much of it still standing. Path's now taking us right in the middle of one of the ditches now that replaced some of the wall. So you get a much, much better picture idea of what it would have been like. So if you're a Celt, you're going to run all the way up. And that's knackering. What a soggy cock. <laughs> now I've got a bunch of sheep blocking the way. Yeah, go move. So that's day one near enough done. Nearly. Just the last sort of few hundred meters back to the village. Wasn't too bad? No, nope, not too bad at all. No, I think um, definitely a good sort of way to ease your way in. Not too many steep bits. Um, and Plenty of styles, definitely a lot of those, uh, lots of sheep and a good amount of the wall um, we've seen so far but we know tomorrow is going to be a really really good stretch so really looking forward to that. Now it's time I guess refresh, yep. pint, yep. drink, yep. excellent. <laughs> Welcome to day two of our um, hike along Adrian's Wall. We have some blue sky today, so a lot better start already. And we're going to be covering about eight miles today with a little bit extra to go and see a fort, but we'll come on to that in a bit. Uh, we're going to be finishing off in a little village called Once Brood. 
Um, and today the scenery is going to get a lot more dramatic with the wall going over cliffs and ridges. So coming up to the first ones now. So it should be some pretty good stuff to show you over the next few hours. But first, if you do pass through Greenhead, the Army Roman Museum is a must see. Based at the location of an old fort, it features exhibitions telling the stories of the lives of Roman soldiers on the frontier, complete with amazingly preserved personal artefacts and an award-winning 3D film on life at the wall. Bit of wildlife we can see along the way. Back on the trail we were now amongst the farms and fields and soon began to make our way slowly uphill following the wall as it makes its way over the central peaks and the stunning scenery ahead. This bit of the wall is still in really really good condition, still about two meters high which is probably the highest we've seen it so far and this is exactly what we've come to see. For me, beyond the history, this hike is all about the views and scenery. Basically, seeing the wall snake its way all the way over the hilltops into the far distance. But to get to this point, it wasn't going to be a complete walk in the park. Bits going up these up these crags. But once at the top of the ridge line, it was so worth it. Up on the ridges you can find some of the best preserved towers, just like this one. You also get the feeling of how wild but also beautiful it must have been to have stood and watched out from the wall all those years ago. But that wasn't quite the end of the difficult bit just yet. We still had to reach the highest point of Hadrian's Wall, standing at a whopping 345 metres above sea level. It might not sound that much, but given the easy start the day before and the ups and downs of the hills today, it felt a much, much bigger achievement. And there we go. We've reached it to the highest point of the walk. Got panoramic views, so it all round. With the highest section of the wall complete before the halfway mark, it's now back to a gentle downhill and local animals for company. And walking by some of those well preserved mile castles and turrets that line the way. So on top of your turrets and mile castles, you also come across sporadic forts built into the wall as well like this one, where you can only just see little bits of it remaining. Um, not as well preserved as the ones we're going to be seeing later, but still, the next uh, thing you can see along this walk. Pretty much day two of the hike done now as we've gone past the, the highest point. Um, lots up for today? Yep, definitely. Uh, lots of up and down despite it only being eight miles but um, the scenery though was absolutely mind-blowing at times. So cool to be up with the wall, the heights we were. Um, and yeah, so tonight we're staying in the little village of Wandsbrood 
staying in the Twice Brood Inn, cool name. And then tomorrow we've got some awesome scenery coming up again, which you're about to see. And just like that, our arrival at the Twice Brood Inn marks the midway point of our Hadrian's Wall trek. But join me in the second and final episode where we take it back to the amazing scenery as the wall snakes cross hills and ridges and pass some familiar famous locations before we finish in one of the north's coolest cities for a big celebration.